Hey everybody, it's Last Robokai here, and it's finally time to start a new Let's Play. Now, I've been talking about doing Neo 2 for a while, but I thought I'd do something a little different with a new game that came out just recently. It's uh, published by Koei Tecmo. It's set in feudal Japan uh, and features magic and demons and fictionalized versions of historical characters. And Koshi Shibasawa is also the producer. It's not different at all, is it, Steve? It's not. <laughs> I'm sitting here just, uh, just like, you're not convincing me that I'm not about to commentate on Neo here, buddy. Well, let me tell you something. This is Fate Samurai Remnant, and it is a game that is a part of a fairly massive uh, Japanese fictional franchise. And it is, uh, it is a juggernaut these days, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, with multiple anime, manga, video games, mobile games, light novels, just, there is, there is so much stuff that is, like, got fate attached to it as a brand name these days, being published primarily just in Japan. We, we, what we end up seeing is not a huge amount of it, but this is, this is a game made by Omega Force, who typically make the Dynasty Warrior style games. And um, so it's got a lot of Musou in its blood, which is the term they use to describe an invincible man kills thousands of dudes. But there's something a little bit, a little bit different about it as well. And in typical Fate fashion, it has a lot of story and a lot of words. Cool guy has, who is joining me? Obviously, I don't even think I've introduced him yet. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> before, I already cool guy. said something. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, like like yeah. we're we're, we're, know, we're we've rude. established that I'm here. Yes, I have I have summoned him. <laughs> and then he turned and looked at me and said, "Are you my co-commentator?" And we're going to be uh, we're going to be dunking Cool Guy headfirst into fate lore uh, rather abruptly because he has very little understanding of uh, I, of fate. Yeah. He's never read any visual novels, never watched Correct. any of the anime adaptations of Fate Correct. Stay Night. He has never he has never played any of the games. This is going to be his first experience with it. And to be perfectly honest, it's not like I've beaten this game already, so this isn't a blind playthrough. This is a pretty good game to get a first experience for. So, with that in mind, pray to God you're right on that, because <laughs> I like I, the the main immersion I've had is is watching all of those internet memes that are, ju are just like, okay, give me the short version of Fate, and then the dude goes on for like eight minutes, and then finally <laughs> the the learner interrupts and said. I thought you were giving me the short version. And the speaker responds, This is the short version. <laughs> also King Arthur meeting Saber and going, Who are you? I'm you, but a woman. And then having to go through all the different lists of all the other ones. But anyway, three minutes of an intro. I think it's time to get stuck in because holy cow, you guys you guys think we talked for a while? Uh, this game is going to be throwing words at us. So let's right. get stuck straight in. むかし、この菩薩峠には矢五郎一味という山賊がおってな。あの目を盗んでは山小屋を襲い悪役の限りを尽くしたそうなある年矢五郎は手下を連れ小さな港町を襲撃した奪うだけ奪った。かろうじて生き残った者は矢五郎に戯れた子供一人。自らの武勇伝を語り聞かせ、宴で釈放させたという。矢五郎は子供好きでな。人しきり可愛がった後。
夜明け前には自分も同じようにムクロになるのだろうとな<笑>おしまい。じいさん、話はそれで終わりか。<笑>何も落ちちゃいねえじゃねえか。ヤゴロウ一味とその子供はどうなったんで。どうも何も。この。That reminds me when I was reading w a t e r m a r g i n when most of the story ends were like,、oh, you wouldn't believe what happened next, but that's a story for another time. Yeah, of like, of like the first, the, of the first seminal case of episodic storytelling. I, I, will, I will say this. When I first played this game,、uh, I must have hit s e r t or something because I sk entirely skipped that first cutscene. And I just got these guys, these guys, and I was so confused. <laughs> it was only when I was recording this, I was like, oh, okay. I was, I was actually meant to see something. I wasn't just like walking on to like, like on an old guy finishing like a rambling story. The traveler's not just yelling at an old man for no reason. So、this, this is sort of a really roundabout way to get back around to like one of the characters we're like going to be meeting pretty much instantly. Yeah, like this is this is Chekhov's gun. Dot, well, like dot txt. You wouldn't spend so much time talking about Yagoro if, if he wasn't going to be relevant. Oh, Yagoro, no.、Um... <laughs> oh, not Yagoro, huh? <laughs> not Yagoro, man. Kid, I、uh, imagine you, then. You... You're, you're about to get told about uh, uh, Yagoro. Uh -huh. Yagoro is fucking dead. <laughs> I mean, that, that is indeed what they just agreed on. He died with spear in his hand.、Mm -hmm. yeah, some, some person just turned up and slew like, an entire band of 84 people. Sure. Yeah. That does happen every so often. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there are too many people that could do that. Yeah. Precisely what time is this? Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking like Miyamoto Musashi, like, like prob probably high on my list there. Well, let's just say,、um, yes. Okay! <laughs>、uh, cool! We are in, we... <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay, okay, great, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this story does go, go on quite a bit, just to say, oh, yeah, like, someone killed all of them. I swear to God, like, they, don't, they never say anything that. conclusive. That was, that was yeah, literally they... just, uh, just, me, uh, just me being genre savvy. Yeah, we are, we are into the Kayan era,、uh, which is the era that sort of kicked off with the Tokugawa reign. Right. And we're on to our.、Uh, I think we're on to our. Fourth Tokugawa, I believe the third. The third Tokugawa shogun、uh, has passed away. Okay, his son is now in. So it'll, it'll say it'll I, confirm this in a moment. Anyway, I very qui、uh, quickly,、um, quickly, uh, quickly, uh, quickly lose track of Tokugawa names after Ieyasu and、uh, and and Hideyoshi. Sixteen fifty one. All right. All right. All right. Is this a period in Japanese history I know very little about because, frankly, it was pretty boring for the, because the Tokugawa shogun ju、uh, just had a massive stranglehold on everything. And here we have Miyamoto Iori,、uh -huh. the adopted son of Miyamoto Musashi. All and right, our protagonist.、Then. And fairly obviously, the boy from the story. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, this game, on its base level, it's a Musou. On its base level. So, we have lots of big like, you know, crowd smashing attacks, you know, and your attacks aren't going to get much more fancy than XXXY or XXXXXXY. But as time goes on,、um, more stuff will be unlocked to make、uh, make Iori、uh, a lot more rounded out and have a lot more interesting things he can do. But whenever there are like human enemies on the board, they're mostly just going to get like absolutely stopped like this. 
And another thing, um, another thing that Iori has access to is stance changes. He'll have about five stances by the end of the game. Uh, we start with two. And the, the first one is his Earth Stance, which gives him a shield, so he can like block a fixed amount of damage, which as he gets stronger obviously becomes becomes larger. And Water Stance, which lacks that block, but it has lots of like it's it's like the more conventional Muso move set, whereas the Earth Stance will will basically get a lot of counters and and things like that tied to it, and, and primarily works for like more conventional duels. On like you know one on one sorts of things. This is all like this is also his like his dad's signature style, basically. Yes, he is using he is using the uh, the Ninten Ritchu, I think they call it. I can't believe I forgot the name of that. Um, since you it gets said like a thousand times in this game, obviously as well. Some enemies will will glow red and do a big attack, but if you interrupt them with your heavy attack, uh, or just interrupt them in general, I guess it's better to the heavy attack at least I like to. You'll uh, you'll stun him, and uh, this this applies for pretty much any character that we'll be encountering. Everyone has some form of a uh, desperation attack or heavy charged attack. So yeah, so Iori's pretty damn good with the blade. Uh, Iori historically was more like an administrator, right? Um, and quite a gifted one too, from everything I've read about him. He was actually pretty damn good at his job. And of course, like like your standard Musou, there's also a button you can press which basically just deletes everybody on screen. It bunches literally everyone together, and then you just delete them. Okay, bye! So we've had our fun with Musou and being able to wipe out large groups of guys. There are some things a regular human being will very much struggle to fight, and uh, and this is one of them. And so, just starting out, we have none of the tools required to really be able to take care of an enemy like this. So we want to just try and like survive, and after they do an attack, some of these really powerful enemies will have a brief window where, because you can see, like, I survived not taking damage because, um, because my block thing went off. Uh, but basically when they glow after doing a series of attacks, you can duck in and you can get some hits. This will complicate as time goes on, as our moveset expands, so will the, uh, the barriers to being able to defeat a foe like this. But as you can kind of tell, uh, this dark-clad samurai with floating pauldrons is, uh, it's not a it's it's not a fight you can win. You can game over during this tutorial fight, but um it's not a fight you're here to win. I'm like I'm still referring to this cat as a Tengu until until proven otherwise. Like like I see what those pauldrons are. <laughs>
私は結小説烈士足らんと志すものである<笑>宮本伊織殿<笑>この度はまことに申し訳ないがゆえあってお命をいただく<笑>俺はまだ死ぬわけにはいかない<笑>ちょっと。Although, say she's since been further adopted into the Ogasawara clan. Ogasawara, sorry. I, I, I added a lot more. Too much. Speaking of eating. Interesting, Ogasawara are、uh, typically. Historically, a sort of a weird clan that、um, did, a lot of, did a lot of stuff involving、um, academies. You know, teaching of Bushido and things like that. They, they, did, they didn't get into a lot of the political games that, that a lot of the other great names got,、uh, got into. They were, they were a little bit more,、uh, more of just like the underlying support infrastructure、uh, that.、Um, That,、uh, that thrive just under that great game. The Tanishigawa clan, the, the one that everybody、uh, the one that everybody associates with, with having really good gunners,、um, what, it was kind of like that. They, they never, they never re-、uh, really played at the highest political level. They were more just happy to keep making guns and selling guns. 
and leasing out guns and doing things with guns. Like, that was, that was kind of their thing. So this, this sequence sort of highlights that they do have a, a genuine sibling bond in spite of the fact that they're both, you know, they're both adopted. Um, but it also sort of highlights that Iori is just kind of, kind of in a weird place right now. He's, he's doing sword training, he's like trying to sort of master, uh, you know, like the way of the blade and things like that, but we're, we're, we're in a time period where that's not really that necessary. Right. And so he's kind of living out, she, like, his sister, Kaya, she's, she's living in a, in a pretty nice, nice place. She's still coming and preparing food and bringing it to him. <laughs> I fucking love the little pictures at the corner. <laughs> the, those uh, those portraits are doing a lot of work. Oh, the portraits are so fantastic. Yeah, we haven't even seen the best one yet. The best character has yet to arrive. If you look at look at the area he's living in. It's run down and shit. Yeah, it. Uh, <laughs> there, there, it could it could use a fresh coat of paint as we put it. Every day is a good day. And so now our job is to head off to talk to uh Sukunen Shon uh Suk I can't believe I've I've played through this game like nearly twice now and I'm like mispronouncing everything already. But yeah, no, we are, uh, we are, you know, we're in this nice little area, and so this is where this game sort of, sort of shifts away from being a Maso and starts becoming more like a Yakuza game. <laughs> oh, that's writing some big <laughs> checks, buddy. Well, I mean, just so in terms of, you walk around the static locations, they don't ever really change that much. And like, you know, there's a similar, there's a similar Yakuza game called Kishin, which is, which is, a, you know, not the same time period, far, far later. But it's got a very similar vibe. The only difference is that this game has a it's just not nearly even like a, a tenth of as many mini games <laughs> as, as, as Kishin has. This game's a bit more straightforward. There are like a few little weird diversions you can do. I almost felt like they got added because they sort of looked at Kishin or like other like sort of like Yakuza games and went, hmm. So it's kind of like it's kind of like Omega Force's first attempt at making a, a Yakuza style game, and the original Yakuza didn't have a, a huge amu amount of side diversions either. I don't believe. I, I've barely played Yakuza games e uh, either, but you know, by, uh, like I just I just understand what the what the scope of a of a standard Yakuza game is. I was fitting that in, into my brain of uh, of of what's go uh, going on here, and I'm just like, oh my god. Like one of the f this this game <laughs> this game punches pretty high in terms of story. Just yeah, I was way. gonna like, say yeah. like one of the one of the few bank uh, like uh, like backdrops where I could actually see them uh, like fitting that much content in there and not ha uh, having it get boring. But also my poor brain, I'm going to have to absorb all of that. <laughs> oh, just you wait, my friend. Just you wait. <laughs> Yeah, so he's, he's basically doing uh, he's basically doing work for the local constables in the region um, taking care of the things that you know they probably couldn't because we're, we're, we're transitioning into a, into a peacetime but a lot of people are still walking around carrying swords and a lot of like lords are getting diminished and so they can't keep on as many retainers so a lot more people are getting let go. And so it's just kind of like this really weird upheaval moment in Japan where like the Tokugawa, the Tokugawa keep a pretty solid grip on everything, but it's really hard to, it, like, it, it's hard to say if they're actually managing to succeed at giving everyone something else to do with their lives. Because it's like, if you're not a samurai, what are you, are you going to, are you going to step down to be a peasant? Of course you aren't. <laughs> Not if you've been enjoying the, the, you know, the, having a roof over your head and not having to like till a field all day and every day. So that's what you know, that she was talking. That lady was talking about there. But signs will be important later. We have this little thing we can use to tell us where to go as well, which is really nice. I love that. I love my little bouncing line of of aid. <laughs> I just love. It. It's like we're just gonna discuss our criminal activities completely out in the open because what is anyone gonna do about it? I mean, we're like especially six when the guys dude is, with... tall, uh, is that tall. Like he's <laughs> genuinely almost two heads taller than everybody around him. <laughs> that's uh, that's just how uh, that's just how Musou games like to denote that someone is like important. 
And so as a result of this, we'll get to see, uh, you know, when he turns up, because he's, he's apparently just finished for a moment so that we can uh, show off a few more things involving the combat, because the game is going to teach us about something else shortly. And I can never remember the name of it, and it's got a really weird name. So once uh, once the game tells us about it, we'll get into it. But he's gonna, you know, he's gonna step back so that we can have this explanation. And it just occurred, and it's called Afterglow, which is a very strange. Yeah, that's that's a name you could call it, I suppose. I would strongly recommend you call it something else. So what that does is, um, when you have the afterglow effect, that stances baubles will will glow around you for a time. So if you change stances, you'll get bonuses from it. So water to water to any other stance gives you an increased attack speed. Um, earth to any other stance uh, means that your like enemies hitting you will not interrupt you. Poof. All right. It basically, just keep, I just keeps up for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> It's to encourage you to switch your stances up a lot more. Probably means that whatever the hell is going on with your hand, body. And interrupt the deadly attack to immediately apply after. Yeah, and so a lot of enemies that are like better than mooks can also block. You know, that allows the enemy to basically pull off a rapid heavy attack if you hit them too many times while they're blocking. There are means to, to interrupt it that we don't have access to just yet. But, you know, as I say, like, as our tool as our toolkit escalates, so will uh, so will theirs. But, you know, <laughs> we'll see as we go along. And, of course, duels. there are there are duels where you can end up in a clash with somebody. And, uh... You know, some enemies you'll win very easily, and some enemies will absolutely just throw all your shit in because good luck. And it's an RPG, so we we have level ups. <laughs> of course we do. Actually, like like I, I shouldn't even snark. Like uh, like we have we have those sorts of level up Muso games as well. Yeah, and you know that's a that's a common staple of the Yakuza series as well. So you know, pretty sure. Rumor was they were inten originally intending on making this game more like a Souls like, and I'm kind of kind of glad they didn't. <laughs> I really don't. I don't think the Souls like form uh, formula would work very well if if people are talking this much. Like the. A lot, a lot of the point behind a Souls like I'm not even like isn't 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 so much the whole environmental storytelling or whatever, but it's getting in the zone and feel, uh, feeling the flow of things. Like there's a very spe a specific combat ry uh, rhythm and move uh, and movement feel to every Souls like game, and if you're interrupting it all the time for pe uh, for people to talk li uh, like this, it's easy to get uh, get knocked out of it. So, you know, we've got this weird thing forming on our hand. <laughs> wonder what that's all about. <laughs> I don't have the money to see a doctor anyway. Yeah, you know, the Japanese healthcare system, not so fantastic. Then again, they probably would have just given him, like, basically said, hey dude, rub this on your hand and go sleep. And also and, lose some weight. And try not to die of tuberculosis. <laughs> Pretty sure more people die of tuberculosis than old age in like these days. Pretty sure that's how Miyamoto Masashi did that in a cave, famously. Yeah, I was I was gonna say like uh, like that's definitely how how Masashi went up, uh, went out. Like the the enti the entire problem with uh, with it for those uh, for those who might be doubting that uh, that statement is that after you get tuberculosis. Unless you have access to antibiotics, it doesn't really go away. Like it doesn't really leave. Like, uh, like, uh, like there are certain situations where uh, where you can you can kind of like, uh, like your body can suppress it to the point where it's no longer an issue. But by and large, like unless you have antibiotics, which nobody had antibiotics in this day and age, uh, you you more or less have tuberculosis forever, and that's it. Have fun with that. That's a strange statement there. There doesn't seem to be anybody else in the room. Red is asleep. Red is asleep. At least he has a nice enough, like, 
to Tommy Flo. Because <laughs> everything else looks a bit shit. <laughs> he had he w- had the money for exactly one thing, and he was like, "I want I want to not feel like I'm sleeping in dirt." And you know what? Fair. Like I'm with that. まだ死ぬわけにはいかない。この光やはり。さするに。We'll call it that? <laughs> that pose is like very famous in Fate. <laughs> someone on the ground, someone st- looking over them. Hand on hip, I presume, is an important part of this, this formulation. No, that's just Seipo. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Saber's personality. I'm apparently Saber. You, you'll have to. You'll have to tell me. Saber's very strong. Nice to have something done for you once in a while. いやすいな。呼び捨てられる覚えはないぞ。名乗ったの。オッケー。話をする人も。いや、ノ、アイアムウィズ、アムウィズヨーリオンですワン。いや、ノ。ライク、ライク、ライク、ライク、ライク、
and has a, a few that she's basically been like magically infusing for a very long time that so hit like fucking trucks. <laughs> so yeah, this is the game just saying like if a guy blocks, don't don't keep hitting him unless you like you've got like you know unless you've got some way to interrupt. Like cast magic if they're blocking, and that'll uh, that'll interrupt them. But of course, gems don't just like gems are actually kind of hard to come by at the start. <laughs> uh, and uh, and you know like the game. The game makes it pretty tricky to get them. Oh, rise back. Right. So let's uh, let's do the the usual dance. Uh, Saber can distract enemies as well, and uh, Ryder has a bit more of the move set in use now. But as you can see, uh, Saber does do damage, but again, I, I, the killing blow, I don't believe, can be performed by anyone but Iori. She also doesn't exactly do a hell of a lot of damage. Like, I can't help but, no uh, but notice that one of your strikes is doing, uh, like, five times as much as much damage. Well, it would be a bit silly if the uh, the NPC could do way more damage. <laughs> Trust me, when you get to use Saber, Saber is going to do way more hits. <laughs> And here's another mechanic of the game. Sometimes, uh, your, you know, your servant will, will jump in and, uh, and protect him. Which is just as well, because we would not win that duel. はい、はい。So yeah, we're playing a saber for the book. Calm down. And uh, Saber has uh, uh, access to a few abilities at the moment that use the affinity gauge, which which is, you know, basically increased while fighting and uh, and taking damage and things like that. And they can uh, they can do a bunch of various different sort of interesting uh, attacks. So like Rolling Rapids is cracked. Rolling Rapids will basically just like do that. Like that's that's busted as hell and like it really should never be taken off your. Uh, of your kit. Raindrop is a pretty good one as well because Raindrop comes out cheap. So this is like, you know, this is them using their big fuck off attack. So you, Raindrops doesn't do a huge amount of damage, but it does. It stuns it basically from doing like. big fuck off attacks, cool. Yeah, and it does it from like any range. But yeah, the general. The general. Although like Saber can fight through all the enemy block attacks and things like that, for the most part, like, you can also still like attack between non sort of. Done sort of gl glowy post attack moments. このままでは浅草 
ここにも一人欲しがりだなランサーならば来い収める気はないかならば何が起きた聞きましょうマスター英月の儀人目をはばかるべきかと<笑>我らも下がるライダー宮本伊織マスターの一人として今は不足と見た。承知伊織殿次に会う時は必ずやお命いただく逃げるかおのれ待てセイバー Really need a child, like a child harness for that one with like a lead on it. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, granted, I think she's got the right idea. This person is literally like, hey, I'm going to kill you sometime. And I'm just going to walk away. It's just like, really? That's what we're doing here. All right. I, I think it's important to note that it, the Ryder certainly uh, vanished. Ryder did not leave. <laughs> Still, though, like. He came out. He came out on the worst end of of generally both uh, both interactions you were having there. Like, yeah, I, but like, he already doesn't know what the fuck's going on, and just like half of the area where he lived exploded. He's like, yeah, well, that was Saber's fault. <laughs> yeah, he's like, we we need to stop. Hold on a second. What the fuck is going on? You just appeared in front of me. Can't kamehameha here. <laughs> Can't do that here. <laughs>電化の宝刀そういうものか。それならば、うん。
英月の義を生き残ることはできんの So there you go. That's like the first, the first opening salvo of、uh, of Fate Samurai Remnant, and I bet you have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, like most, mostly, what in the fuck was that? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what I, the like, fuck was that? Like they've yeah, just they've like, dropped they've dropped a. Why is everybody named after the like you know, why are characters named Saber, Lancer, Rider? You know, like what? You know, why? Why are they like fighting on a power level far beyond what humans can do? What is this? This waxing moon ritual? Right. Like there, there. It's the first. It's the first. The first motion of the first act. The entire <laughs> point behind、uh, behind it is to drop a lot of clues, refuse to uh, to uh, to elaborate further, leave. Like that's it. So I get it, you know, like, of like I'm not going、uh, going to get a whole lot of answers、uh, right now. So you know, like like I I'm in for more. Basically, the good the good, the good news is is that um、uh, at the start of like the next part,、uh, at the very least, the waxing moon ritual gets a little bit of an explanation. Because、uh, obviously you can't just say something like "Yeah,、uh, we won't survive the waxing moon ritual" and not have someone go,、well, "Hold on, what? what? Rewind." <laughs> Can you uh, uh, elaborate? Poor, poor Iori has been thrown headfirst into something he does not understand, and、uh, and yeah, and so as we continue、um, next time on、uh, Fate Samurai Remnant,、um, well, we 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 spend a little time. Learning、um, a little bit about the waxing moon ritual,、uh, which is,、uh, for those who know Fate, just a a, a Grail ritual with the、uh, with a new sticker taped on and、uh, and some problems because it wasn't done properly. So that'll be next time. I've been Lost Robokai, and I have been Cool Guy, and we'll see you for part two、uh, of Fate <laughs> Samurai Remnant, where、uh, where for those of you who do not have Fate knowledge, we'll get a little more context to our.、Uh, <laughs> the insanity going on. We'll see you all next time.